Hi everyone, my name is Tanya and today I am sharing how to make this art journal page using products maybe you might have heard of or already have in your stash and are not quite sure how to use them. I'm going to be testing your mixed media limits today if you are a mixed media beginner and uh, don't worry I'll be talking you through the whole process. So to start off I am going to be working on Alternews watercolor paper. This comes in a 9 by 12 paper pad and I have cut down the sheet into 6 by 8 inches and I'll be using the Spring Roses die set which was just released uh, uh, this month in June and I have die cut those in white cardstock and I will be using the Block Alpha and the Amazing Thing stamp set as well. To start off, I am going to be taking the Broken Chevron stencil and I am really, really roughly doodling through the stencil and creating some marks on the uh, watercolor paper. This is, this is really, really rough. I'm not being very precise at all. If you want, you can be really precise with the outlines, but most of it is going to be covered in the end. Um, and I'll talk you through the process as I go along. So I am now taking some matte gel medium. You can use any clear drying glue that you have. I like using matte gel medium as it dries matte, as the name suggests, and it blends in with my background as well. Now I will, I have said this in my other mixed media videos as well, make sure that you are drying in between each layer so that uh, nothing shifts or moves in between uh, that mediums don't get mixed in with each other as well and i am adding those die cut spring roses onto my art journal page as well the trick to using gel medium is you put down one layer one um, very thin layer of uh, matte medium down and then you put down your collage uh, object in this case this is the die cut and then you layer some more gel medium on top and this sort of seals in your collaged piece and as you can see i have layered those roses over my book text and where i did the doodling as well you can do the doodling by hand but I've used a stencil so that uh, I have some idea of some rough shapes. This is really good uh, if you're not very confident with your doodling or sketching. Sometimes I like doing writing as well, which you might have seen in my previous uh, project videos. So now I've got some gesso here. Uh, gesso is basically a surface preparant or it primes your surface to receive more medium on top. Because I've got that matte gel medium on my surface, if I apply any wet medium like an ink over the top, the medium is just going to repel uh, any wet ink that I apply over the top. So I'm adding the gesso just to tone the book text down, make sure that the collage pieces I've added sort of meld in with the background a bit more and it's preparing the surface as well. So I'm going to be doing some smooshing. You know, I love some good old smooshing. It's a very, very technical term. And as you can see, it's very difficult to do. All you do is just drip some paint on your mat, add some water, or you could even use um, iridescent medium, uh, which comes in a mist, which is absolutely glorious if you wanted to add some shimmer to your background. But I've just used water to uh what to sort of dilute the colors a little bit because these are very very highly pigmented if you want you can use them as is but i wanted to do a wash in the background which is why i diluted it with the water and as you can see i am drying in between each layer this helps to give a more dimensional feel to your ink washes if you don't dry in between it just looks kind of flat uh, when you add your additional ink layers why 
many of my students often ask me why do I get such a flat image and I often ask is are you drying in between each layer so after I've uh, done the ink smooshing I am using the brush markers to add splatters did you know that you could do that you don't have to use a brush but you can use the markers directly on the paper to add your splatters now I'm using the ink blending tool and the all to new tight blue crisp dye ink to just really really lightly touch the the top parts of where the die cut piece is so I, I just wanted to add like a slight shadow where the die cut pieces were just to bring them forward a little bit just to sort of uh, not like a highlight more like a low light uh, and it helps to spotlight them a little bit more as well and uh, for additional ad interest I'm adding some shadows around the edges as well and when I stepped away from the art journal page I wanted I saw that I wanted the roses the die cuts to appear a little bit more from uh, the background so I'm at using the ink pad directly on the die cuts and because I have gesso on there the paper is not absorbing the ink and I am able to move it around a little bit as well and here I am stamping the flower from the amazing things stamp set I am absolutely obsessed guys seriously obsessed with this stamp set I mean look at those drips it was just made for me <laughs> this stamp set I thank whoever designed the stamps up. I love it so much. And I've used colors that are in the background as well so that it brings some cohesiveness to the whole layout. Um, so I've set the, everything to the side and I'm using the block alpha stamp set which I've had for a while but never really gotten around to using. I'm not really sure why and and now you're probably going to see it in every single video. <laughs> I make <laughs> so I've I've uh, stamped it out in obsidian pigment ink and I am uh, fussy cutting around the edges just leaving a ever so slight white border and it gives the impression that this was a custom die cut that I had just lying around uh, to add on to my art journal page and I'm using uh, here I'm using a fan brush to add some splatters of jet black ink spray onto my background because I've used black as my sentiment and I've used uh, the black outline in my flower as well so I wanted to add some black in my background as well um, and here I'm using I tend to do a lot of die cutting so I always have spares lying around so I'm using the leaves from the spring roses uh, die cuts that I had and sort of have them peeking out from behind that uh, flower that I had stamped earlier and here you can see I am layering everything up just to see how I want everything positioned um, to add my flower onto my page I am sticking it down with some double-sided uh, foam adhesive and I've added some foam adhesive to part of the sentiment and like up till the R because I knew that that will be hanging off the edge so I did foam adhesive behind there and glue behind the rest so that was resting over that flower um, sometimes I like to take a step back and have a look at my art journal page um, without doing the whole thing in one go so I took a step back and thought that it needed something just a tiny bit extra so I took the ink pad directly around the edges and there you can see where the ink pad has picked up the texture from the art journal page here is a closer look at what the art journal page looked like I hope that you enjoyed this video if you have any questions please leave it in the comments section on the blog or on YouTube Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Hello crafters. I hope you enjoyed that video. 
If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching.